we continue to simplify radicals containing variables. We've looked at some examples in the previous video, um, but none of them contained any fractions. So in these two examples, we're going to look at radicals containing variables and also fractions. As you can see, there is a fraction 5a over 7b with the radical sign, and also uh, this whole thing is a fraction which violates rule number three. Uh, that no radical appears in the denominator. So in this whole fraction, in the denominator, we have a radical, which violates number three. And in this case, with the radical sign, there's a fraction which violates uh, rule number two. Uh, so we need to try to, uh, first of all, uh, we can uh, get rid of the uh, fractions with the radical sign. And what we can do is we can take square root of the top, which gives us square root of 5a, and take square root of the bottom, which gives us square root of 7b. And uh, now, if you look uh, at this step, that uh, that w we have a radical on the, in the top, we have a radical in the bottom, um, but within each radical, there are no fractions anymore. 5a is not a fraction, 7b is not a fraction. And, but it still violates number th rule number three. We are not supposed to have a radical in the denominator, but we do have a radical 7b. In the top, we, we can have radicals, but not in the denominator. So how do we get rid of that? Uh, remember that uh, to get rid of radical sign, uh, recall the problems we did before, say if we have square root of 49, and then uh, we get 7, the radical sign disappears, because 49, it can be written as 7 times 7, which is 7 squared, or two copies of 7. And then when you take square root, you're just going to get a whole number 7. And similarly, if we have, say, square root b squared, and then we also get letter B without the radical sign anymore because any two copies can come out. And so this is the idea. Uh, this tells us what we need to do to get rid of this radical sign. The reason we have this radical sign is because we have a single 7 here, a single copy of 7, a single copy of B. If we multiply another radical sign with another copy of 7 and another copy of b and notice in this 7 multiply that 7 that give us two copies of 7 this b multiplies that b that gives us two copies of b and two copies of 7 can come out to get a 7 two copies of b can come out to get a b the radical sums will disappear and so this is the idea what tells us what we need to do to uh, what we need to multiply and to this fraction, both top and bottom, to get rid of the radicals in the denominator. Um, so notice that, uh, please remember, whatever you multiply, you have to multiply exactly the same thing. So we, because uh, we, our goal is to get rid of the radical in the denominator and not the numerator. That's why we focus on the bottom. And we might to try to match another copy, another copy, so we can uh, get two copies and to get rid of the radical sign. So if we decide that we need to multiply square root of 7b on the, in the denominator, we also have to multiply the same thing, exactly the same thing, radical 7b on the, in the numerator. So now we can multiply out, say, square root of, uh, we're going to multiply the numbers with, the, with the, the radical sign, 7 times 7 and b times b. And that will give us uh, 7 out, and this will give us a b out. So on the bottom, that can get us a, just a 7b. And the radical signs disappear because of the reason that we explained. Any two copies can come out of the radical sign. Um, and on the top, we have to so multiply the numbers. There's not really anything we can do. So 5 times 7 would be 35. A times B will just be A times B. Uh, maybe I can slow down and write down this step. So we're going to multiply the numbers and the variables with the radical sign. 
uh, radical signs, and then we, uh, sorry, this is a B here. There are no two, no two copies of anything, so we just multiply them, 35 AB, and take a look at the. So this is the final answer, and this is in the simplest form because, uh, first of all, with the radical sign, there are no two copies of anything, single five, single seven, single A, single B, and um, which multiplies to get as 35 AB, and so it meets the first requirement. Second requirement, no fraction appears with the radical sign. This is the radical sign here. With the radical sign, we have 35 AB, no fractions. Although the whole thing is a fraction, um, rule number two only says with the radical sign. With the radical sign, uh, this is what we have. This is with the radical sign that apparently has no fraction. Now, rule number three, says no radical appears in the denominator and this in this whole fraction that's our denominator and there it's 7b there's no radical sign in the denominator so it also meets the third rule so this is the simplest form now let's take a look at example six so example six is sort of like starting from here uh, we already have uh, we don't have fractions on, with the radical sign, because 2b with the radical sign, 45, uh, a fifth with radical sign, neither of them is a fraction. We don't have to worry about rule number two. But we do have a radical in the denominator, which is radical 45, a fifth. So what we need to do is, there are a few different ways to do this. Um, you may be able to do the same thing like we did. Okay, there's a single 7. Let's multiply by another copy of 7. Single B, multiply another copy of B. Um, but in this case, uh, I'm going to try to uh, reduce. Because um, you may not need to multiply another copy of 45. If you multiply another copy of 45, you may have to simplify it later. And so let's first break down 45 8 fifth. See what we need. So we know 45 is 5 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. And a fifth is 5 copies of a. A, 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 a. And on the top, in the numerator, there's nothing we need to do. So notice that we have two copies of 3. That can be taken out of the radical sign. And two copies of a, two copies of a, which we discussed before. Um, so you can do the quick way without expanding the number of copies so now we have a three this this pair of three comes out and we have two pairs of a that give us just a squared because this a comes out a this a comes out a times a, a squared and what's left with with the radical sign now is just the five and a and so we don't really have to multiply another copy of 45 and another copy of a fifth that would be way too big and later you still have to reduce that 45 with square root of 45 and a fifth. Then notice that we all we need to multiply is just another copy of 5, another copy of a, because single 5 and the single a. So we multiply the same thing on the top in the numerator. And uh, again, the numerator is square root of 2b should be uh, kept. So, um, so the first thing I did is to simplify the bottom simplify the bottom if you can and then decide uh, what copies we need to multiply so to get rid of so because three a squared it's already um, they they are not under radical sign we don't have to worry about that part all we need to worry about is this part to get rid of the radical sign so now we continue to multiply on the in the numerator in the denominator we have 3a squared that we keep, and notice that square root of 5a times 5a, that will give us a square root of 25a squared. And when you do square root of 25a squared, that's just a 5a. Because 25, square root of 25 is a 5. Square root of a squared, that's a a. And in the numerator, and there's um, just a, a 2 times 5 will be 10. A times B will be uh, AB. Now, in the denominator, we can do one more step because 3 times 5 can be multiplied 15. A squared times A, they can be multiplied to get a third. And the top in the numerator, we just keep it, keep them. So make sure you simplify it first. And to get a sim very simplified 
radical to and then multiply another copy to to match the single copies. So you can get two copies and get them out of C twenty five is two cups of five a squared is two cups of a two. So you can get them out of the uh, radical sign. Uh, so make uh if uh, make sure you don't multiply another copy of forty five a fifth. That will uh, make the problem more complicated. Um, so I can do a quick explanation here. If you do that, what's going to happen? Uh, let's say uh, on, in the numerator, uh, if you multiply another copy of forty-five a fifth on the top, and and also in in the numerator, now in the bottom and in the numerator, and then you're going to ha have yes, you can get you can get forty-five two copies of forty-five uh, out of the radical sign, and you can also get uh, two copies of a fifth out of the radical sign. So you have forty-five. These two copies will give you a forty-five out of the radical sign. A fifth, you got two copies of a fifth. You can get them out of the radical sign. But in the numerator, this part is not sim sim simplest form because forty-five contains two copies of three. A fifth contains Four copies of a, which can be、um, simplified, and you still have to simplify this. And、uh, we can, I can do this a little quick here. So when you simplify that, you will get three、uh, a square square root of a. And then notice this three can cancel that forty-five. You get fifteen, and you also have to reduce a square a a fifth to get a third. So you finally get the same thing, and multiply these two radicals to get.、Um, Oh, sorry. There's a five here, and then to get、uh, square root of ten a b over fifteen a cubed.、Um, so this way is uh, uh, not too bad, but you will create more work. For example,、uh, you still have to you still have to simplify this later. Although you didn't simplify in the first place, you still have to simplify later. And after you simplify, you have to reduce the top and the bottom, the common factors. Say three and forty-five, they have three in common. A squared, a fifth, they have a squared in common, and that's the extra work that we、uh, we had to do, and we didn't have to do that in the previous、uh, previous solution. So this this way is not recommended. Always, whenever you have radicals, always simplify that radical first, and then determine what to multiply.